Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing work on our low poly stylized cottage. We'll be working on the roof and the walls. Do check out the other playlist on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay so here's where we got to last time when we're going to put in the roofs and the walls. So I'll go back into object mode and come to front view with one on my numpad. I'm going to add with shift A a mesh plane and the plane is sitting on the floor there, you can see it there. I'm going to press R X 90 so that will rotate it in the X axis 90 degrees. And let's press G to grab and move that roughly into position and I'm going to scale it up so it covers the front of the house. So just about there. Do remember though, when we're scaling like that, that our scale properties are not set to one. So I'll just press Control A and scale to make sure they are set to one. You can scale in edit mode, and that means you won't have to do that. But if you scale in edit mode, your object center can move away from the center. It doesn't make too much difference in this case. I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to use the knife tool. So K is the shortcut for that. K for knife, of course. And notice that my cursor changes to a knife and it's got a green square and that square snaps to edges. It's a good idea to keep your cuts roughly to the edges so I'll certainly start on an edge in this case. Left click to place a cut and this curves up slightly so I'm going to place a cut around here up to the end here and down and round just left clicking to create the cuts. Lastly make sure you snap to the edge here, left click, and to finish your cuts, press enter. So we've got this cut around here now. I can now go to face mode with three on my keyboard and select this outer face here, but I can't seem to click on it. If I zoom in just a touch, you can see there's two faces, one there and one there. So you have to sort of click in the center. It's because it's confused with the shape of this face. It's a very unusual face for Blender to work with. One, because it's not made up of four sides, and two, it sort of goes round a corner. But anyway, we can select that outer face by selecting one of these dots and pressing delete and faces. Now we're left with a single face here, which will work fine. So I'll go back to edit mode and we've got our face at the front there. I'll turn X-ray mode off so we can see it working. So for the side wall and the roof, it's much easier because we just use a straightforward plane. So shift A to add mesh and plane, G to grab in the Z and move it up and just move that into position. I'll go to side view and then move it there, scale it up slightly and we'll have this overlapping our beams. Now around to front view with one on my numpad, rotate and we'll roughly get it into position. Control A to set the scale and now into edit mode so we can start lining it up properly. First I'll grab the top edge here, so 2 to go to edge mode or you can click up here select that top edge and GG will edge slide. So rather than pressing G and trying to line it up, we can press GG and slide that edge down and intersect the roof like that. And the bottom one, GG and slide it up. So there's an overlap to around about there. I'm going to do two loop cuts down through the middle. So control R and move your mouse until you get the orange line, wheel up to get two and double left click. Now I can start moving these into position. Let's go to front view and I'll go to vertex mode and box select the vertices. Don't just single click like this because the back one won't be selected. So box select them, G to grab. Oh, I've just noticed I wasn't in wireframe mode. So let's undo that. Box select them this time. And now when I press G to grab, that will work. So we'll move these above the beams. We'll make it solid in just a moment. And this is intersecting the top beam, but it's just above this beam coming down here. Okay, let's go back into solid mode and just quickly see how that's looking. Okay, that's good, but we need to give it a sort of sag in the middle here. So control R to do a loop cut, two loop cuts there, G then Z to move it downwards. And we've got that sort of old cottagey sunken roof look. Now to make this solid, there's a great modifier called the solidify modifier. Rather than selecting all your faces and extruding outwards, to create a face. If we want to make any edits, we have to make sure we select the two vertices, the one behind the other, and start moving it about. I'll undo that, and with the solidify modifier, under the modifier, so the spanner here, or the wrench, 
add modifier and solidify. You can see the thickness there is one centimeter and we've got one centimeter there. So if I start up in the thickness and that will overlap that beam slightly, not too much though, probably around there. We're going to put some tiles on the top of this so you don't need it too thick. Let's just come around to the back for a moment and make sure it's not overlapping too much here. And I think it is a little bit. So we'll select this edge loop down here. So two to go to edge mode, alt left click to select an edge loop and GG to edge slide. And let's just see where that beam is and overlap it just slightly somewhere around there. Okay. So that's one side of our roof. Now let's concentrate on the bottom wall, which is probably the easiest to do into object mode, shift A to add and then mesh plane. Come to front view, rotate, move it into position, probably around there. Side view, move it into position. I'll constrain it to the Y by pressing Y and then scale in the Y and just line that up a bit more. Okay, and now into edit mode, I can just come in, select the top edge, G twice and pull it down. Now you can actually see through our shape there that might cause a problem later. So I will create a couple of loop cuts up there and pull that up so there's no gap. You could even have a beam going across here if you wanted to. Firstly, I'll select this bottom shape here, come to side view with three, GG to edge slide, so it slides upwards. Okay, so two loop cuts, Control R, move your mouse until you get the yellow line, wheel up and double left click. Let's go to wireframe mode and vertex mode. Then I can move this one up into position. In fact, let's grab that one and the back one, go to front view and just move it up so it sort of intersects the roof. Back to solid mode, make sure it's not actually poking through and we haven't got too much of a gap, so that should be fine. So we can now select both the roof and the wall, Shift D to duplicate R, Z, 180, and that will just flip them around to the other side. This isn't the most foolproof way of doing this. Ideally, you'd actually mirror them to the other side, but that can get a bit complicated due to where the origin is and the objects transforms. So this is the nice, quick, simple way. I press G to grab in the X and move that across and over. I'll move round and now we just have to adapt our shape and move it into position. So we'll start with the roof, go to front view, into edit mode. I'll turn wireframe on so we can start moving these. This one's a bit higher. That looks fine for the moment. I'll just grab this into position as well. So intersecting there and moving these verts up back to solid mode and see how we're getting on. So a bit of intersecting there, back into object mode, select this object and start editing these points. Probably this one, G then Z. And these two up here, G then Z. And these three, G then Z. So just a bit of fine tuning and that works nicely. Okay, we need to cut a shape here for a window and a shape here for a window. And I'll probably put in a couple of windows here, but let's start with the side here. So into object mode, choose the front here, into edit mode, one to go to front view and K for the knife tool. And let's cut out that circular window here. It can be nice and rough because it's an old cottage. Press enter and notice how it creates those edges for us. That's to help the program out to figure out where those faces are. We can press three for face mode and then delete faces and that will delete that face there and let's create one down here. So K for knife tool up and round and press enter. Now let's say I didn't like where they were. We can always grab that face and move it around. So it's a bit more central, maybe around here. So it's got enough space for bricks around it. And then we can press delete faces. Now, before I do the door, what I'm going to do is Go into object mode and duplicate it to the back. So I'll just go to side view, shift D to duplicate and Y to grab it across there. And then we've got the exact replica at the back there. Now you might not want a door at the back. It's such a small cottage. It probably would only have one entrance so we can delete these beams and then maybe cut in a new window here or even just move this window. So select that object into edit mode and we can select the edges around here two to edge mode and I can alt left click and it will select that edge loop there and shift alt left click to select the other side. Go to reverse front view, so control one and G to grab and move that into position. Maybe make it a touch bigger. I'm using front view and reverse front view, 
or back view because then it will keep in line and won't distort. If I press G to grab now you can see it all distorting all over the place and it's a mess. And lastly into object mode select this front face into edit mode and cut out that front door. So one on my keyboard, K for the knife tool and just cut out this front door here. Press enter to finish, select those two faces and delete. Okay, so that's done most of the base of the house. Let me know how you're getting on. And if you've got any thoughts and ideas, put them in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.